Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Julie. I do everything from book reviews to tarot, and if you're returning, I'm so glad I haven't scared you off. Now what are we talking about today? On this dark and stormy day where my ring light is doing all the work, I'm going to be talking about Darling Girl by Liz Mikowski. Now Darling Girl follows the granddaughter of Wendy Darling from the original Peter Pan tale. She was the one who, along with her brothers, was whisked off to Neverland. And something that the Darling family knows that the rest of the world doesn't is that Peter Pan is real. Well, I shouldn't say all of the Darling family knows he's real. Our main character, Holly Darling, has worked to make sure that her son believes that Peter Pan is just a fairy tale. But in reality, Holly knows that Peter Pan is not only real, he's a dangerous, dangerous being. Our novel opens on Holly. She is now a successful executive running her own beauty line, Darling Skin Care. And she now lives in New York with her son, Jack. And by all accounts, she seems the picture of success. She comes from generational wealth because of her family's ties to the original Peter Pan story. Essentially what happened there was when Wendy returned from her adventures in Neverland, she connected with the author of the original tale, actually, J.M. Barry, and he kind of transcribed her adventures, um, took some creative liberties, you might say. And now through their connection with that story, they receive royalties. And so they not only come from generational wealth, but Holly in her own right is successful. Um, however, as we get more into the story, we realize just how many secrets Holly and her family does harbor. Don't worry too much about spoilers. I'm going to keep this spoiler free. I'm basically only going to give you the secrets that are available on the front cover because everything else is treated as a major reveal. Also, before we go any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my first official patron, Jazz. Thank you so much for helping to make this video possible. If you guys would like to support the channel as well as get access to exclusive benefits such as voting on video topics, Patreon only bonus content, and also seeing your name featured at the end of videos, um, consider supporting me on Patreon. Links to that will be in the description. Now before the events of the novel we learn that Holly and her family were in a car crash which tragically killed her husband and Jack's twin brother, Isaac. To lose half your family in essentially an instant, Holly suffered severe emotional damage as well as physical damage from the crash. Her son was left with a permanent disability, it would seem. They don't really get much into it because shortly after, Holly, Holly discovers that she is pregnant with a miraculous daughter named Eden. And she tries her best to raise Eden for the first two years of her life alongside Jack, who needs a lot of medical attention as a result of his injuries. And one day she discovers that the two of them are playing. All this happens, by the way, before we get into the novel itself. We learn this along the way in the, in, in the beginning, pretty much. Um, but, but just kind of the backstory behind Holly. Um, one day, one day um, her children are playing together and Holly falls from a tree while she is trying to teach Jack how to fly. And she then falls and, and suffers major head trauma and is in a coma as a result. Now, one thing we quickly learn about Eden is that she has a rare, a rare growing disorder. There's something going on with Eden where she grows faster faster than her age so at two she looked like five and it, it constantly accelerates holly soon discovers that eden's blood has healing properties when jack gets eden's blood on him as a result of the incident she notices that he begins to heal he can walk more easily his scars begin to fade he becomes more more healthy so to say being that she's a chemist by trade holly essentially takes this opportunity to use blood transfusions from eden to continue to heal jack she notices that the blood doesn't have a long lasting effect of maybe like a few months or so a month or so 
and it keeps getting shorter the more Jack ages. So the setup at the beginning of the novel is Eden is still comatose for what I believe to be about 13 years. And Jack um, receives regular transfusions of Eden's blood, although he does not know that he, um, that his sister is still alive. He actually doesn't even remember his sister. As a result of recurring trauma and as a result of his surgeries, his memory seems to be um, a little blanked out and he, and he doesn't even remember that she exists. So it's, it's a convenient setup for Holly. That's not the right word and it sounds insensitive, but she kind of uses this web of lies that she's created. She tells Jack that he's low iron and that these are just like medical transfusions and she sees this as kind of a greater good scenario where she regularly visits Eden and gets the blood and then injects it into Jack. This setup, disturbing as it is, um, serves the family well enough until one day Eden goes missing and Holly suspects she knows who the culprit is, our good old Peter Pan. Not only does Holly have to worry about the safety of her daughter, but she also worries what will happen to Jack if he does not continue to receive these treatments. She sees as the injections get further and further apart that his health is worsening, and she does indeed fear the worst for him as well. To top it all off, in order to deal with her daughter's disappearance, Holly has to scramble to protect Jack from the truth of Eden's existence. She worries that if she tells him the truth now, he'll never be able to trust her again or won't be able to deal with it. And really, the only person who knows about Eden's existence is Holly's own mother, Jane. This was the one part of the novel that I didn't quite understand. The author repeatedly tells us that the Darlings have achieved celebrity status. The paparazzi and the press are always hounding them for dirt and gossip and intrigue. And for somehow, under these circumstances, Holly has been able to not only keep her daughter a secret for 13 years, but also keep these transfusions a secret. When Eden has had round-the-clock care at her um, home in Cornwall for 13 years, all this whole team of nurses, I understand the author says that they sign strict um, NDAs or non-disclosure agreements and kind of leaves it there. But I just find it hard to believe that, especially in today's day and age, like something like that wouldn't get out. There's public record of this daughter existing. And I feel like any journalist worth their salt would have gone after that. But I guess that's, I guess that's a small nitpick. But anyway, besides that, I forget what I was even saying. I think the theming in this book was very good and consistent. There's definitely this theme of healing through shared memories, of learning to trust others and the benefit of having a support system. And I think these are all very key themes as well. There's, there's a very interesting um, idea here that in order for your child to grow and in order for you to express their love, sometimes you gotta give them the freedom to grow without you. And I think that was a very nuanced and important message to come away um, from this book as well. The book is incredibly well written. Um, it definitely has a thrilling, suspenseful vibe. So if you're into fantasy thrillers, I would say this is definitely the book for you. Every page kind of feels like a cliffhanger. You feel like another secret's about to be revealed another truth to be uncovered that Holly's kept from everybody. And it's really a page turner in that way. I finished this book in a couple of days and I've only done that maybe a handful of times. Hey guys, editing Julie here. One thing I forgot to mention is that I really like that the book is written in third person omniscient, but can only really follow Holly. And once you get into the more sinister aspects of the book and what Peter Pan is capable of, You'll see that art kind of imitates life there. But I like it because you get a sense of Holly's inner world, but you also don't really know how her lies and truths and, and interactions are affecting the characters around her. So I think it even communicates the importance of truth telling and the importance of clear communication even more. So I think the art style kind of supports the messaging there. There's a lot of lore and intrigue. It's said at one point in the novel that People never really die in Neverland, they kind of just shift off to different planes of existence. And it's interesting the parallels that that has to Holly's own life. 
Her business partner and best friend is named Barry, and the author of the original Peter Pan stories, J.M. Barry, spelled differently, but you could see the coincidence a little bit, and Jane later reveals that they had an Uncle Smee, who, you know, was <laughs> Captain Hook's first mate on his pirate ship. And also, there, there are just a ton more. Part of this is definitely that I just saw Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, so I'm like, multiversal theory in the Peter Pan universe confirmed, but it was definitely interesting to me to see these parallels and see how how that kind of uncovers the lore of Neverland and, and how these different characters interact. I have a hardcover edition. It clocks in at about 340 pages. Perhaps a little long, but I would say the book does not feel its length. Um, one criticism I may have is that the ending felt a little rushed in comparison to the rest of the book. I think there was a lot of time spent on like the build up to, the, to this adventure and not enough time spent on the resolution. It all felt kind of rushed and you'll see what I mean when I say the ending happens a little bit off screen, so to speak. Um, but I didn't really feel cheated out of an ending because I felt like it was wrapped up very cleanly and nicely and the lessons really carried through. Uh, again, the book does not feel its length. I would highly recommend this one. I'm going to give it, let's say, an 8 out of 10. Ratings are arbitrary, but still. Um, I think that's going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Our next book is either going to be The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo or the daughter of the moon goddess. I'm going to be put, putting that to a vote on Patreon, so if you're interested in what we cover next, be sure to vote on there and check out more ways to contribute to the channel. And thanks guys, I love you so much. I hope you enjoy. Leave me a comment and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this review today. All right guys.